So Dr. Khan, we both know Chris Bumstead, CBUM, and we know that obviously he's a phenomenal bodybuilder, but you and I both know, I mean, that is a lifestyle that is really hard on the body. It's hard on the joints. It's hard on the organs. You know, I know he's been talking a lot more recently about kind of how he's utilizing stem cells, how he is able to prolong his longevity in the sport by kind of applying different things. And, you know, I'm working on getting him on the channel, but I know that he's okay with you kind of talking about some of the things that he's done to kind of prolong his life in the sport. Uh, you know, right out the gate, like what are some of the things that he's maybe doing to protect himself with such a damaging, I don't want to say damaging, but intense sport? <laughs> it's an extreme sport. And unfortunately, bodybuilding has become a sport where you get rewarded for being bigger and bigger. And so that generally means more and more drugs. Some people are genetically gifted and they don't have to take as many drugs. But at the end of the day, you still have to use a lot to get to that size. And that puts damage, that puts stress on your organs. That, that puts stress on your heart, your kidney, your liver. So Chris being, he's, 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 he's actually very intelligent in the sense that he, he's, he's young, right? He's only 29 now. Mm -hmm. And he started thinking about this in his 20s to saying, hey, what am I going to do when I'm like 40? Or what am I going to do when, when I'm older? I don't want to end up like these bodybuilders who need kidney transplants or get heart attacks and a lot of them get premature death, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of them have accelerated aging. And so he came to me kind of wondering, what can I do from a, preventative standpoint and you know he did have a little bit of kid decreased kidney function too and so he was kind of like what can we do for the kidneys as well so this is where cellular therapies come in because as we've talked about on another podcast these stem cells have kind of the ability to repair damaged tissue and to slow down the aging process so naturally we we did that for him intra, the intravenous infusions and we actually did direct injections for him too he came to dubai and we did an injection directly into his kidneys with stem cells and that's that's an interventional radiology procedure we do with our team i popped a link down below for create creatine gummies 50 percent off of them so after today's video check them out 50 percent off allulose sweetened gummies these have 1.5 grams of creatine per gummy so it makes it so you can low dose your creatine. When you're talking about getting in shape for summer, it might make some sense. Helps preserve a little muscle mass by keeping your strength high, even if you're in a caloric deficit. There's countless bodies of research when it comes down to creatine. So I'm not blowing any smoke. The stuff is legit, but the little gummies make it easy to sort of microdose creatine throughout the day. So I find I don't get the water retention that I would get if I were to just drink like a five or 10 gram bolus of it at one sitting. Not to mention 50% off is pretty darn awesome. So that link is in the top line of the description underneath this video, their new sour apple flavor, holy smokes, especially with no added sugar in it, off the charts. Interesting. So what are some of the things that happen to the organs with like bodybuilders? I think, you know, just for people that maybe, maybe they're just, they don't know, they don't know what's going on. Like, what is happening and why is it potentially happening? Like maybe even independent of the drugs. Like, is there just like a lot of just overall stress? Like, what is it? I, yeah, I mean, I think if you look at natural bodybuilders, they tend not to have these issues. And yeah. But natural bodybuilders are also like 100 pounds lighter. So maybe being bigger and having 100 True. pounds more is putting more organ damage or organ stress for sure because there's, you know, more metabolic damage. But... I think the biggest, the biggest, and the most common things we see, and I used to, I, I take care of a lot of, I used to take care of a lot of them. So I used to do blood work for them, and I used to monitor them all the time. And and then they used to ask me, what can I do to kind of mitigate their risk because they're not going to stop. You know, it's kind of like they're they're going to do it. And so it's, it's almost about harm reduction. How do we how do we do interventions, or what can we do so that they're not going to have you know end stage kidney disease in their forties or fifties? Uh, and so the most common things we see or definitely kidney, I would say is probably, if not the top where, and a lot of times you can get kidney dysfunction uh, before your your typical doctor, if they're just owning like a EGFR or kidney function, that might not always pick it up. Sometimes you have to do what's called a C-SAT and C, uh, which is like a more specific way, and especially in bodybuilders can pick up if they're starting to have early signs of kidney dysfunction. And then there's also like protein in the urine that you can get. So there's different ways you can kind of measure and see, it, okay, am I starting to have premature signs of kidney damage and then same thing with liver like obviously you can get liver damage too but the thing with the liver is it regenerates 
right? More so than other organs. And so as long as your liver enzymes don't go above five times normal, I mean, I know it's a big thing, but, yeah. if, but if it goes above five times normal, then that's where you're getting into tech, t- typically irreversible or some sort of where intervention you're going to need to fix that. Whereas a lot of times when people come off cycle and, you know, they're able to do it in an intelligent way, uh, then they're able to kind of mitigate the harm. And I think the biggest, the biggest piece of advice I'd give is you have to get a coach who understands that stuff and is really experienced because it, the coach makes all the difference. I've had, I've had athletes who were on, you know, 2000 milligrams of tests because their coach is just like blasting them. And then I've had other athletes who are smart and then they, they don't need as much. And there's coaches like, okay, no, we're going to start with like a couple hundred milligrams and we'll see how you respond and then go up from there. So I think the coach can make a huge difference too in how to, you know, kind of cycle and everything. Yeah. I mean, there's even impacts on, uh, you know, kind of where your estrogen levels go and kind of organ function with that, right? Like, so if like estrogen levels are out of control, I know that can be potentially, you know, damaging to the organs as well. Uh, you know, usually when you look at bodybuilders and you're you know, monitoring their liver enzymes or AST and their ALT, I mean, I think most of them are pretty, hopefully, I shouldn't say most of them, but a lot of them are savvy enough to kind of keep an eye on that, depending on what they're doing. Um, do you notice that there's improvement in potential liver function with kind of these regenerative therapies or is it like the liver regenerates so fast it's kind of a moot point? Yeah, no, if we've had, we've definitely had patients who kind of went outside where it didn't come back down and then they're able to come to us and we're able to reverse that damage. And there's, uh, there's actually a company that has a really interesting supplement because most, you know, most of just supplements is an interesting industry, right? Like it's kind of one of those things, there's like a few hidden gems, mm-hmm. right? There's like 99% of it isn't great, but then yeah. there's probably 1% where if you find the right stuff, that's mm-hmm. great. For sure. And there's a company called Deliverance, D, uh, D-E, and then liver, like, and then ANC, A-N-C-E. And it was actually a PhD MD scientist, uh, physician. He's a hepatobiliary surgeon and he, him and his team came up with this supplement that actually boosts your own body's ability to make glutathione. Uh, and it Im- improves, and it's, it's almost like a bioregulator in a sense, it improves your liver function. Hmm. And they've shown that it can reverse non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and it can even up to stage two liver cirrhosis, it can even reverse that. And it's just a supplement you take every day. So a lot of my bodybuilders, I tell them to take that if they're gonna be doing intense cycles or uh, it's a way to potentially mitigate some of the stress that you're doing to your organs. Uh, and again, it's always easier to do prevention than having to reverse it after the fact. So you'd be a good person to ask on this. Like, what? Where do you stand with like glutathione supplementation or glut- IV glutathione? Is it like such a short <laughs> snippet that it really doesn't I, even matter? Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Or IV NAD, same thing. It doesn't yeah. go into the cells. I'm a fan of getting your own body to work better. Yeah. That as a general principle, that's what a, that's a good rule for people to understand. So that's why I like this supplement because it's getting your own body to work better in the sense that liver is functioning better and it's producing more glutathione. It's producing more of that master antioxidant, which is going to be able to mitigate ROS and everything else that we know it causes accelerated aging. Yeah. And the thing that's always confused me about like IV glutathione or even glutathione supplements is like, yes, you want to get your body to produce it, but your body also knows how to like pulse it and produce it at the right times. And it seems like a certain level of ROS is also important right? Exactly. to drive Balance. certain things. Exactly. So it's like if, you know, us in all our prefrontal cortex wisdom think that we know more than the innate healing wisdom of the body. Yeah. You know, we like, oh, like I feel like I might be run down. Maybe I should slam some glutathione IV. It's like, okay, maybe you're actually squelching something that's really important right now. Like maybe that slight elevation in oxidative stress right now is exactly what your body needs and the glutathione pulse will come later, right? It's just like, I think that we get so wrapped up in the fact that we think we can outsmart sort of the, again, the, the inherent like wisdom of the body. Like it knows what it's doing. Just give yourself the tools so that it can do it better on its own time in some terms. Yeah, that's pretty much our slogan, which is empowering the body's innate healing, healing abilities. That's <laughs> I literally, literally didn't know that. That's so literally that's our slogan. So that, and the reason is because that's, that's the principle of it, right? Your body always wants to maintain tissue homeostasis. So what signals and tools can you give it so it can maintain that? And that's, that's the way I look at the body. And that's why I'm not a huge fan of those, a lot of those interventions because they go against, in my view, they go against that principle. Yeah, I'm hundred percent there. So it's like, for example, we talk about with fasting and I know that, uh, Sebum has actually talked about like fasting and before. So I know that I think, and I think that's, I know he follows my channel. So I think that he, maybe he's, you know, into it to a certain degree. And obviously we talk about that all the time on this channel, but one of the issues that I have is that like people like fasting, you're you're creating a certain level of oxidative stress, right? That's like, it is a stress on the body. And then you're sort of allowing the body to upregulate its natural antioxidant processes. You know, you're kind of getting this, you know, superoxide dismutase increase. You're getting these things and you're 
you're manually sort of influencing the body to do what it needs to do. But for example, one of the biggest things I tell people not to do is especially when you're fasting, like don't don't be taking vitamin C, don't take antioxidants, right? Like you want sort of your body's endogenous production at this point in time. Don't enable it, don't squelch that by adding something and you're never gonna be able to have the power that your body has. So how do you increase the body's kind of natural ability to do that? And it's like when you come out of a fasted state, you know, then that might be a better time. But even then, like I'm not a fan of taking exogenous antioxidants at any point unless you absolutely feel it's necessary. I mean, there's there's some, I think, specific times, like for example, right after a workout, there is potentially a benefit if you're immunosuppressed. But even then, there's also a lot of evidence that suggests if you take antioxidants post-workout, that then you're blunting. Well, exactly. Horme- well, hormesis, right? Yeah. Your body has the stressor of which it, and it's going to adapt to that. But you, that's why I think, you know, having the natural food kind of source of it, it they've done I, I remember reading studies on this where if you take yeah if you take an oral if you take an oral antioxidant uh versus eating like i, I can't remember which ve- it, was, it was a bunch of veg- it was a bunch of polyphenols uh i can't remember exactly which plant it was but essentially the response in the body was very different in terms of how it was able to m- mitigate oxidative stress in a healthy way versus like in a like almost like a kind of shotgun way you know what i mean where it's like it's almost it's doing it too much so like you said there's like there's always this balance and the the stuff that occurs in nature tends to be better at regulating that balance than you know synthesized and uh supplement kind of uh exogenous things so if we bring it back to like sebum and some of the stuff that that he does like has in terms of his actual training, as he mentioned that like this has improved his. Well, he, I mean, you can see the picture with his. Uh, he had like literally like ten band aids on both his knees because he had uh, he had pretty bad knee uh, knee damage because of his probably squatting five hundred pounds of Smith machine, which yeah. not a fan of. But that's a whole other topic. But basically, it's uh, you know, and he's again he's young, so uh, so for sure it helped him. He said he, this was one of his best preps last year uh, because we did the fall statin for him, we did the IV stem cells, and then we fixed up his knees as well and he said he was able to train hard he was able to have more energy especially when he's getting into those last few weeks before the show uh, and that's obviously because he i mean you're, you're literally doing all the stuff that's going to help you with recovery energy strength like all the kind of tools that we have to give your body every kind of like you know competitive advantage that you can give i think especially when you're going into prep i mean that's one of the things like your sleep just goes to crap right yeah. you're pretty significant caloric deficit your training demand is still decently high sometimes higher than when you're in a like a bulking prep um, not to mention stress of the shows and then of course your know, water manipulation all that gets like, very hard on the body so i mean it's interesting to hear that like that's been a huge improvement for him to see that yeah and i think that and that's where it comes back to like the stuff can be used for uh performance enhancement as well or maintaining a high level of performance or health optimization and for so for people who don't have any health issues these tool these are just tools they're they're obviously the kind of the cutting edge of what we have available in the world right now like they're really the most kind of sophisticated i would say because they're cellular and gene therapies but for a lot of people who are looking for that extra edge this is something that's out there do you uh, obviously you can't speak to them because you don't work with all of them but are you at least hearing through the grapevine like you know the top level bodybuilders are a lot of them kind of uh bringing these kinds of things on board yeah well it's becoming more and more popular i would say i would say the biggest barrier right now is probably for a lot of them because bodybuilders you know they're not like uh living in their mom's basements well, usually yeah, you <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah exactly it's unfortunately you know they they don't they're not it's it's a uh, yeah they, they don't have the means that a lot of other pro athletes do right yeah and so these things are still expensive and i think as time as these things become more affordable i would see more and more of them doing it as a preventative thing because if i was a bodybuilder i would be i would be consistently cycling peptides to protect my organs I would be doing regular infusions and, uh, you know, all this stuff just as a, as a ri- uh, risk reduction strategy. Uh, and, and, and again, it's more it's more about thinking long term because the other thing is the heart. We didn't talk about the heart, like the heart, for example, a lot of doctors just do for bodybuilders. They'll just do like the, the traditional pan of cholesterol and all that. But that doesn't necessarily tell you like you got it for bodybuilders, especially you need to do a coronary calcium score and you need to see the different soft and hard plaques and then see if you're at risk of that, because that's that's what ends up killing a lot of them in the long term. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you probably got some. A, you know, enlarged heart as well. You've got all these things. I mean, and you're not supporting basically an, an organ that is now, you know, larger than it's supposed to be. There's a lot of other kind of detrimental effects that come along with that. I mean, if it was me, I would be more inclined to go this route 
first before kind of going, okay, what additional sort of exogenous hormones can I add into the equation? It seems like, at least from my perspective, like when you're adding exogenous hormones and you have a myriad of different downstream effects that are, I mean, you're manipulating one individual hormone, right? Or an androgen or whatever. So that's like, there's all these different things that can potentially go different directions with that. But if there's the potential for fullestatin, if there's the potential for to get there first before going this route, I think it's for a lot of you know people that are getting into bodybuilding that maybe had the resources, it seems like a smarter, safer first step, if you ask me. Yeah, and it's, it's funny, you know who actually got me into stem cells? It was Ronnie Coleman. So interesting. Yeah, I had a I had a, I had a weird dream about him the other night. I can't remember. <laughs> That's weird. I don't know. I, not that kind of dream. Just like <laughs> just just to, lifting just, together, bodybuilding. Yeah. So no, he was in his current state, like kind of oh, kind of dec- like just yeah, degenerated. Off balance, off balance, yeah. yeah. So I had a call with him uh, almost two years ago. So this, that, which is when I started doing uh, stem cells, and I, I was very skeptical about going into this whole industry. And uh, one of my patients is best friends with him. So he's like, you got to talk to Ronnie. And because uh, he went down to some clinic in Mexico and had IV stem cells done and apparently it helped his pain. And so I got on the phone with him because he wasn't in like severe chronic pain. I remember watching that documentary on Netflix and mm-hmm. seeing, you know, he was taking so many of the OxyContin and yeah. uh, just like and still saying he's like in 10 out of 10 pain. And it's just like it's like unimaginable. Right. And so he said after doing the IV stem cell infusions, he had three of them and he said like, he was like, my pain went away. And I was like, I was like, what do you mean your pain went away? <laughs> like, I was like so confused by it because I didn't understand how they how could they even do that. So then obviously once I started going into it and researching it a bit more, then I started getting into it. I'm like, holy crap, this has a lot of potential. And that's kind of what actually got me into it. So it's uh so gotta thank Ronnie for that. <laughs> yeah, I think people think, you know, these kinds of therapies and they think just like Tony Robbins types or wealthy entrepreneurs or whatnot. I think there's a very strong application for for athletes, and I'm, I'm hoping that in time it you know becomes more affordable, so that it's because I think it's a, in my opinion, probably a better first step than a lot of other ways that people. Well, go. it's safe and it it has so many other benefits, not just for athletics, but for aging in general. And uh, the whole the whole point of at least what we're trying to do, and you know the whole point of this thing is it's kind of like I always say like electric vehicles, right? Like when electric vehicles first came out in 2010, like Tesla, mm-hmm. it, it, the Tesla car was kind of like a piece of crap. Like it was a bunch <laughs> of just batteries strapped together, and it didn't go very far. And and but how did he? It was and it was super expensive. And but but the whole idea was that he's going to get like the you know the rich and famous to kind of do it first, and then once they start doing it, then he can kind of you can make other kind of offerings that are cheaper. And then you and then you start getting economies of scale, uh, and that's that's kind of what's happening in this field too. You're getting what what you're getting manu- better manufacturing. You're getting innovation in cellular manufacturing, and there's going to be a huge cost curve reduction over the next decade. No, I'm with you, man. Well, uh, Dr. Khan, where can everyone find you? Yeah, at dr.akhan, a k h a n, and Instagram, and then our website is eterna.health. Right on, my man. Thanks, All brother. Right. Thanks.